wanna know my occupation. I get paid to watch the nation. Roll it. Roll it now. From my watching the DC studios, Roland Martin, good morning. Good morning, folks. Hope all is well with you. Yesterday began the trial of George Zimmerman in the uh, shooting death of Trayvon Martin. Jury selection has started, as you've been alluding to in your news reports all morning. Wanted to get the perspective uh, of television legal analyst Mitwin Charles. She joins us this morning. Mitwin, welcome back to the show. Morning. Thanks for having me. Okay, so a hundred different uh, jurors uh, had to answer questions, and they're going to uh, interview about twenty-one today. So, from an attorney standpoint, uh, what from a defense standpoint, what are you trying to look for in a juror and the prosecution as well? Well, both both sides are basically trying to look for a jury that can be impartial. One of the things that I think everyone is aware of with this case is all the evidence that has been leaked. So, what both prosecution and what both uh, the defense must do is ask these potential jurors, listen, what have you seen about this case? What have you read about the case? The ideal juror for both sides is someone who can be impartial despite all that they've seen or read about the case today. Or living no. under a rock. Exactly, which is going to be hard to do. Well, well, the thing is, it's not that you're living under the rock. It's just that you can still be impartial despite what you've heard. Now, all the no. evidence that's been leaked has been leaked by... It has been leaked by the defense. And I have to say, to a certain extent, it's, it's a little bit on the grimy side. It really is, and some would say even unethical. But as a defense attorney, unfortunately, this is one of the things that you have to do. You have to defend your client zealously. Um, and Mark O'Mara, who is an experienced attorney, he's representing George Zimmerman, he took the approach where he would release certain information into the public. And what it does, is he is basically trying to influence the jury pool, trying to make sure that everyone right. sees this information. Now, Mitwin, uh, you also, of course, that, uh, folks, I really think that when it comes to really the trial starting, that the jury selection uh, could very well obviously go this week. Uh, and depending upon if they get 12 jurors in the alternates, we may even go into next week where they're still selecting a jury. I think they will. This is going to be a tough one because, as we've, we've been discussing, there's so much information out there. So it's going to be really, really difficult for those attorneys to kind of sit back, watch the potential jurors, look at their body language, listen to what they say, and try to pick the best one. And it's going to take quite a while, I think, only because there's so much information out there. And this is a, a, an incredibly charged case, right? No matter how you come down on it, whether you think George Zimmerman purposefully killed Trayvon Martin or whether you think George Zimmerman was in his right to defend himself. It's one of those things where either way you come down on it, the emotions kind of get to people on both sides of this. Um, and so that's what makes this a difficult case also. I got to ask you this real quick. Uh, we were talking about this Chad Johnson case from a legal standpoint. Was the judge gave him 30 days slapping his attorney on the butt saying basically not taking this seriously uh, too much time or was she trying to make a point? Uh, clearly trying to make a point. Uh, and, and how much discretion does a judge have uh, to th to cancel a plea agreement and throw somebody in jail? Well, to answer your first question, both. It's excessive um, and the judge is trying to make a point. Judges have wide latitude when it comes to throwing somebody in jail. People tend to forget that. Yes, they oftentimes are lenient, but sometimes when they're looking to make a point, they go for the jugular. But I think it's excessive. I'm not a fan of throwing people in jail for, you know, periods of time um, just to make a, a point. We already have a problem with over-incarceration, um, and I, I'm just not a fan of it. Thank you. One <laughs> last question. One last question. <laughs> okay. About, about the uh, 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 Trayvon trial uh -huh. and the selection of the jury. Mm -hmm. uh, how important is it going to be that there are some black people on the jury and yesterday out of the 21 that they turned down how many were black oh wow you know i think it's going to be crucial prosecution will say listen we're going to work really hard to keep a black person off the jury the problem is that the jury pool in this county is already largely white largely conservative so the likelihood that a, a, you know a black person ends up on that jury is a very very small chance Wow, you think it's going to be an all-white jury? It might be. It might be. So would they look at uh, the women and being mothers or that kind of thing and, and that kind of angle, perhaps? Well, they might. And I, 
a very good question because I think this cuts across lines when it comes to mothers and their children because there are many women, both black, white, Latina, whatever you want to call it, who definitely felt to Sabrina Fulton as a mother. Like, how is it that you can send your son out to buy Skittles and juice and all of a sudden he comes, you know, back it home in a body home. bag? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Gonna be interesting. TV analyst, Mitt with Charles. We certainly appreciate it. Thanks a lot.